Hey, Wargamers. Welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron. Hey, Matt Steiner here. And we are coming at you with a very, uh, very unplanned and very special sneak peek of the upcoming Tamar Rising Sourcebook. That's right, guys. We got our hands on it early, courtesy of Randall Bills, and we are going to dive into this puppy uh, and let you know what we think. And if you're lucky, uh, we'll flash up some. Uh, we'll give you a, we'll give you some some extra sneak peeks, some deeper sneak peeks at the uh, the images and artwork and things like that. But only a few, just a taste. Uh, so guys, stick around. Matt's read through it. I've taken a look at it. We're gonna tell you what we think. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's coming right up. All right, so Tamar Rising. So this is, uh, I believe they told me, this is like the first major like era type source book in, a, in quite some time. Um, and I think, in my opinion, it's one of the first, like like one of the first books where I have not seen recycled artwork. Uh, I, I think every piece of art in here is is basically new. Almost, I'm gonna say 80-20 rule for sure. Uh, there is some fantastic artwork in here. 20, yeah. Yeah, at least 80-20. Uh, some fantastic artwork. Uh, all new stories, um, some very familiar factions, and it sort of progresses from that, you know, that that whole um, series of books that we left off with, like Our Move of the Wolf and all of those things, right? So yeah. um, I'll give you a rundown real quick of, of the sections in the book, and then Matt, you know, we can we can kind of talk through them. So um, a lot on the fluff. I mean, there's probably 70 pages, maybe more at 90 pages on, on the fluff. Um, there's a good, you know, 10 pages on key people, right? Key personalities. Um, there's probably 20 pages on the factions, the specific factions. Um, there was one in there in particular that I thought was wiped out, but apparently is making a comeback. A, a, a one that I particularly liked, I thought was cool. Uh, and was bummed when they sided with the word of light, because you know how I feel about that. Um, but it uh, looks like they're coming back. Uh, and then uh, my favorite part is at the end, which is all of the, you know, the, the atlas, the campaign rules. There's some great tables and random things going on there. So um, we'll dive into all this stuff. But let's start with Matt. I think your favorite thing, which is the fluff. You're, 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 you're always my go-to fluff guy. Whenever I'm like, Matt, I didn't read the book. Can you give me the cliff notes? <laughs> Always. <laughs> just, just just phone a friend. That's right. Call the HPG network. <laughs> dial up. Tom sure doesn't care. No, that's interesting. Um, obviously, we had the uh, Ill Clan era kickoff, Hour of the Wolf, the Ill Clan era source book. So we're essentially breaking new ground uh, with a timeline, um, kind of divorcing ourselves from the Dark Age to this new era. Um, and this is the first post Ill Clan book. Um, and it's an era that I've been looking forward to, kind of with enthusiasm and energy behind the franchise, kind of hoping for a return to form, um, kind of where our hearts mutually lay back in kind of the stuff we dealt with during the succession wars. Um, I'm feeling like I'm seeing a lot of that inspiration play out in this material. Um, interesting thing about this book is that at the beginning it gave like a recommended reading section and it lists out kind of the books that lead up to uh tamar rising yeah and i'm looking at the i'm looking at it right now um and what's it say here so it says a bonfire of worlds was one the arrival hour of the wolf and then the two source books shattered fortress and ill clan it says you know not re not not mandatory but of course recommended you know, reading, reading. Yeah, I mean, source book. they lay the context of why we're in this era. And which is funny, back when we were consuming Hour of the Wolf uh, and the Ill Clan source book, my imagination was already with what's going on in that Jade Falcon uh, occupation zone. Um, I've been pre painting miniatures to kind of represent what I want to happen out there. And this book essentially delivers the story of what we're stepping into. Yes. And I think a lot of familiar factions, they didn't get too deep. At least I didn't see it. Maybe you did. I didn't see too much on like color schemes and painting 
Um, no, that wasn't that um, level of, that, of depth. So it's still, still a little artistic liberty there. So that's a key point that uh, brought up towards the end of the book is that the authors acknowledge the fact that we have so much canon and yes, they're fact checking. Uh, they know this material, but we're human. We're not perfect. There's too many details. Um, so they essentially end the book kind of saying, you know, take this with a certain grain of salt for canonicity right. and don't let that stop you from having your own narrative. So I kind of like that. Yeah, I felt I felt sort of bad when I read that section because I could only imagine, you know, they, they said we have a whole team of like, you know, canon cross checkers. Right. And, I, and it's, it's sort of sad that there are people out there that are going to like nitpick every detail, <laughs> like just enjoy it, guys. Uh you know I mean, what? <laughs> uh, the thirty fourth uh, strike cluster was not on this planet at four o'clock p.m. Like, guys, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> Just enjoy it. <laughs> it's fiction. <laughs> no, so yeah, we've kind of got to like ease up and give ourselves an air of margin and you know, not be too strict. Not too strict. Not too strict. Well, speaking of uh, the story. So there's a couple great, uh, you know, so there's there's some. It starts with fiction uh, by Lauren Coleman. Uh, starts with a little little story called "By the Sword," um, and then you know it does dive into all of the the stuff that you were talking about, um, you know, and and amongst that was you know you'd mentioned the clans, but it talks about what happens uh, with Jade Falcon, one of one of Tom's favorites, mm-hmm. right? So so if you want to know what happens, guys, it's in this book. Uh, what did you, what was your opinion on that? Did you think, would you, were you expecting, were you expecting what would happen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it definitely played off of ideas that I wanted to write about myself. Yeah. You know, the Falcons leave, uh, there's a big power vacuum. Come on. Our imaginations go wild. We're a bunch of crazy Lyrans and clanners so, trying to make our pocket empires. What's going to happen? Yeah, um, so that that was a pretty cool thing, and then there's a lot with. Um, so obviously, right, the, the the main thrust is you know the Steiner versus Falcon, right? I mean that that's that was my takeaway. That was sort of the main thrust there, but there's also a lot of Kellhounds uh, in here, right? And um, GDL, right? I I think Great Death Legion. Yeah, so they touched on a few other like. Um older um, popular portions from previous lore, specifically succession era. Um, it's clearly done with purpose because we get to recycle our material and it's an era we're familiar with. So they kind of you know ignite that thought for the GDL, uh, 21st uh, Centauri Lancers, and even a few snippets about, what's his name, Duke Recall. The Red Marauder guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. They, dude, there's, they're planting so many seeds in this book. They're going to sprout later. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I thought so too. And, and the 21st were the ones that I was referencing earlier. I thought they were totally wiped out um, in, in the, uh, you know, in the whole word of Blake nonsense, right? Because they sided. Well, apparently uh, a lance and a half survived. A lance and a half. And they started to rebuild just from, from six max, you know? Yeah, um, you just add more water. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, they found a Starly cache. Um, no, that's not true. I made that up. But you know, they they do rebuild. It's kind of cool to see them back in action. Um, yeah, so so pretty neat stuff. And and again, you know, we talked a little bit about the artwork. And as I'm as I'm paging through here, there are there are some uh, painted mechs. The other thing I love about the artwork, by the way, is. Um, it's all it's all new mechs, right? It's all the new designs. Like everything you see is one of the new mechs. And there's one that jumped out at me in particular, which was the one um, if you have the if you have the dock open, it's the one with the Crusader. It's on page like thirty four. Uh, yeah. You know the Crusader and the Griffin, and that's one I'll pop up. And you know it's 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 like stepping on that looks like a dragonfly in this in like the swamp slash forest area. And, you know, it's letting loose a barrage of missiles from its gauntlet. And I just, I don't know, that picture's so oh, yeah. immersive and well done. Um, really, really cool stuff. 
And the, the other ones I really liked, just to sort of digress on the artwork, were the space, um, the space-based ones, you know, where there's like the fleets of these drop ships and Corsair yeah, no, those are good. fighters yeah. flying right. I mean, really, some of the best, in my opinion, some of the best artwork that I've seen in a while, um, you know, is in this book. Um, some really cool stuff. I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, there's there's a later side to the art in here as well. If you um, mm -hmm. focus much on the portraits of the characters, yes, they're very distinct stylistically. They reminded. I me would say if you look back at the old faction books that had that kind of goofy aged art, mm -hmm. these kind of kind of like hint or seem semi inspired from the kind of stuff that Tex and those guys have maybe brought up and riffed on a little bit they reminded me a lot of the al although i think a slightly different style they reminded some of them reminded me a lot of the um like the backer cards remember the oh um, yeah the decks of backer cards that, that came out with the kickstarter um totally. some of them don't look like that but i think <laughs> i'm looking at one i'm like wow yeah that does not look like a backer card uh but some of them i think are are to that level so so really cool in my opinion but the speaking mm. of the characters there is some some great detail in here like little bios for each of these um these key players in this you know in this story um you know the the governor general and you know the colonels and the lieutenant generals and like all of these different people i don't want to give too many names away so i won't but you know when they were born what's their title you know what's their what's their stake in the game um, and I think that's really cool for, not only if you just like to read the fluff, but you know, from my, like what the first thing I thought of is like, Oh, if I'm going to, if I'm going to make like a, an RPG, like a MechWarrior destiny game, uh, in this particular campaign module, like I have all of the material that I need, you know, right here. I know, you know, who the players are, what they're like, like where they came from, how they came into power. Right. So there's a lot of really neat stuff there. Um, you know, if you're sort of a game master type and you want to, you want to build a, a story in this, you know, this setting, I think there was a lot of cool mm -hmm. stuff in that, in that little chapter. Yeah. This kind of reminds me a little bit of the chaos March stuff that came out back in the day in so much as kind of giving us a space that's in turmoil and now an excuse to go be a mercenary and go have fun and create a story. So it's not like a stable, strong state. It's this kind of quagmire of competing factions. And I sort of like that where there is, you know, sort of more of a blank canvas so that you can pencil in your own stories and your own battles. And the history is yeah. largely unwritten or the canonicity is in question. Um, I think that gives the players and the community a chance to kind of, you know, make it their own, right? Which is one of the, you know, one of the taglines of this, of this franchise, right? Like, you know. Also, possibly Burger King, um, but you know it's you know it's the kind of thing where you know you can take it and write your own story, whether it's a battle report or whether it's an RPG or whether it's a game with your buddies, like whatever it might be. I think I think that excites me about it. There was interesting detail in the back with like the data and um, the random charts. There was yes. also the caveat of like new things to expect while you're playing in this region and era. Mm -hmm. was an increased amount of mixed technology was one of the call outs. Yeah. So having a clan uh, mech in your force for like a Lear infection is no longer bananas. Yeah. As it should be, you know, more common. I mean, we're a hundred years after the clan invasion, right? Um, and, you know, there's continuity with all the recognition guys, right? Which is, which is nice to see. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before we dive into the tables too, the other thing I, I, I will call out is the, the Atlas, right? All the different planets. Um, so they have little, I guess, planet bios, one, one pagers like Arc Royal. What kind of star type is it? What's the surface gravity? You know, what's the H, uh, HPG class on the world, right? And then, you know, a little brief description, almost like the kind of thing you'd find on like the Mech Factory um, website, if, if you've seen that, right? Where you can kind of click into all the planets. Um, or, you know, if you guys are, are Star Wars RPG players, I, I think the Star Wars books always do a nice job. I mean, it actually, if you put it right next to the Star Wars book, I don't know that I'd be able to tell the difference outside the planet name, um, but it looks very much like that, you know, and that is, I, I think, great detail. Again, 
whether you're setting up a battle and you want to know what the terrain is like or what the major cities are, you know, all of these different things. So pretty cool. I, and there's, I think, maybe 10, you know, 10 planets that they spotlight, maybe a little bit less than that. Um, and then, yeah, that's yeah. an interesting point. Like, the planets were good, um, but, like, the scope of the book was controlled, I thought. Yeah. It wasn't a giant yeah. document with tons of overly detailed cataloging. It was the basics of who these people are, where they're at, what do they play with, and then this kind of bio about the main planet of each faction, more or less. And then, you know, the other thing, I guess, as I'm paging through here is, you know, the, you know, we get into the rules annex, which you were talking about, you know, the, all the different tables and things like that. And they have, you know, the more on the factions. So earlier in the book, they talk about the involved factions and the rules annex, they get into, you know, more nitty gritty detail, you know, Kelhounds, who's the CO, what's their average experience, oh, right? Right. What's their force comp? You know, what random assignment table do you use? Which, by the way, there's all brand new uh, rats in the back of this book, as they are called random assignment tables, right? Uh, it also tells you for Alpha Strike, what special command abilities do these guys get? And then they have special pilot abilities or SPAs that you can assign. Um, and I believe they're, they're intended to be specific to the unit that they're listed with, although... You know, I think if you agreed with your opponent, you could just, you know, carte blanche, like assign them. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's whatever you want. So kind of cool. So the other thing that I love here is, um, you know, we talked about this a few times, the the random assignment tables. Uh, Not only do they have them for battle mechs, but they have them for vehicles, battle armor, and air space yeah. too, because you know I love a little combined arms from time to time. So, you know, having a random table for um, you know, battle armor and, and vehicles for other unit types, I think, is is a nice touch. What I thought was weird, and I don't know if all the rats are like this, um, because I've I've actually the only ones I've used were in the Battle of Tukid, and I think they were D12 tables or maybe even D6 tables. Mm-hmm. These are three D6 tables, so they're one to eighteen. Yeah. So yeah, that means we play with the odds yeah. to put like the likelihood of certain mechs within those um, probability ratios. Right, hitting a three or an eighteen is extremely low. Hitting a ten is very high. Um, so there are certain mechs you're going to see a lot, and I don't know if that was intentional or not. But um, as as a nerd of statistics and analytics, like I look at the the, the you know uh, the the probability distribution of hitting certain mechs, and it's like you're never going to see this thing on the table. Um, but I, I guess, you know, they are intended to be more rare for that, for that specific faction. So I guess it could make sense to me. Um, yeah. I won't give too much away, but if you pull an 18 on the Lyran uh, rat, you might get a clan mech for that weight class. That's true. Wink, that true. wink, wink. <laughs> not naming, not naming Max. There's another thing in here, I think maybe the last thing we can talk about before we do, you know, sort of general conclusions on this is, um, so in the rules annex, there's the whole integration with Chaos Campaign, right? Which, you know, we've sort of taken Chaos Campaign and and modified it for our own, you know, our own flavor here at DFA. Um, But even if you just play the Chaos Campaign as written, um, there's a ton in here, and they actually have hooks into interstellar ops, campaign ops, and strategic ops, um, which is really neat. Like they have, you know, what is the, you know, what what's on this planet, right? Um, and you know, you can roll to see like what level of government is on the planet, and like, yeah. you know, who's the, who's the ruler, and you know, of course, you get all like, what's the random gravity on this table. Um, the map itself, though, I want to talk about the map itself. The map itself is is really cool because unlike some of the other inner sphere or, you know, Battletech, I guess I should say, maps, there are um, there are a couple things. One, they show all the jump routes, right? So I don't know yeah, if you saw cool. that on the one. And it shows the time. So if you really want to play, and it talks about it real briefly, but if you really want to get into the detail of, I have, you know a company on this planet and I need to redeploy them to this, you know, this system, how many days will it take? And like, you know, how many, 
what season will it be when I land? <laughs> like all kinds of like they talk about that. It's kind of neat. Like if you want to play at that level of detail, um, you can do it. I mean, I would love to play it. Even that for level more of casual game, right? Knowing the jump length is super useful. Yeah. And now it's just like at your fingertips without having to do research for it. Exactly. And then the other the other thing is they have a second map that, that eliminates the jump routes, but has um, from those planet bios all of the relevant information, right? How many days to the jump point from the planet, right? Where is the jump point? Um, gravity, um, tech level on the planet, who rules it? You know, has recommendations on how big the defending force is. So again, if you're playing an RPG or an interstellar ops campaign or whatever, you land on this planet with your force. It says, you know, for example, the defender should be 120% of the attacking force. Right? It's a heavily defended world. Um, you know, it gives you a couple examples of you know what type of missions might you play. So really great. I think that this kind of stuff I think is fantastic because it takes a lot of the thinking out of you know, the setup, you can just say, all right, I'm attacking. Let's, let's say we're attacking this world. What do you get? What do I get? We take mechs out and and we play the game. I think that's really cool. But if you want to go to that next level, that's all here too. Um, And I appreciate that. I think that was well thought out in this book. Um, This stuff excites me more than the lore, as you know, you're, you're like the, (laughs) you're you're the, you're the fiction guy. I'm the, I'm the mechanics and, you know, rules guy. I mean, I I love this stuff. (laughs) This is what really gets me going. Um, so I, I thought it was really cool, in my opinion. I really like that. Um, so that's that. Let's talk about let's talk about your your general. Uh, I'll let you give your your sort of your overall. You know what you liked, what you didn't like, and would you buy it? Yeah. Yeah, easy. Um, so as a Lyran, this is probably one of the most important books for me in the new era. I mean, that just can't be helped. Um, but I like the quality of the book. So good art, um, good production value, like the data, the numbers are good. Um, it's not overly detailed, but I've got all the major players. Um, so I feel like it's checking a lot of the boxes I need out of the supplement and it kind of gives me selfishly what I want out of the ill clan era, which was kind of the resurgence of the Lyran Commonwealth or in this regard, kind of uh, splinter factions, uh, easy win for me. Obviously, this is a book that I'll be pre-ordering. Yeah. Well, that's that's exciting to hear. I mean, it, it is definitely a book I will add to my collection. Um, you know, it's one that I will reference. I think the things especially that I'm going to draw on um, for me is, you know, the uh, like the Alpha Strike special rules, right? And of course... Um, you know, who are these factions um, in this era, right? Because, you know, we've been doing a lot yeah. in the old clan. So, you know, and they do have some art um, for some of the new mechs, like, you know, the, the first Tamar Jaegers, the pride of Arcturus, right? And they've got, you know, this orange Zeus with sort of gray um, uh, accents on it. looks really cool, right? So, like, you can take some of this stuff and use it. I think, and, and, you know, when you're sort of modeling, like what force do I want to build next? Uh, also the planetary stuff, uh, as I, as I just gushed over, I think that's really cool. The random tables are lots of fun. I'm sure that's something Tom will, will, um, love, you know, goofing around with. So lots of really neat stuff, I think, in, in just even the second half of the book, like the, the rules annex. And if we ever did like want to do an ill clan sort of mech warrior destiny RPG, Again, like this is a must have in my opinion. Like if you want to take your players into that next era, this is I think this is way better than the Ill Clan source book that came out. The Ill Clan source book, the, the previous one, it was good, but there wasn't this level of like and I was it was how you described it, right? They they sort of give you this framework, this sandbox to play in, right? There's just this open conflict. Yeah, I agree. Like if I had to compare them, the Ill Clan source book was a detailed play-by-play of the conquering of Terra. And while that's very cool, I don't see myself spending a ton of time on that. Maybe a series of battles, and then I'm kind of done. Whereas this is really kind of introducing me to a region of space that's new to me. Like, Falcons are gone, chaos is there, power vacuum, let's go play, and things are kind of open-ended. Yeah, yeah, and that and that's why I think I really like this book, um, and and why I think it's it's a must-have in my opinion. 
Um, you know, there, of course, like like every source book, there's going to be things that, that you guys love and things that you guys don't love. But I, I think at the end of the day, um, this is something you're going to want to add, you know, to your shelf, uh, either your virtual shelf or your physical one. Uh, but this this drops, Matt, uh, on the 19th uh, of January. Yeah. Uh, is what I the order is already up, so I'll have my claws and copy. Yeah, I talked to Derek over at Aries. He's uh, he's working with the distributor uh, to get that out. Uh, you can also get it on the the Catalyst store. Um, I'm sure it'll probably be available through Catalyst first um, before it hits all the distribution chains. Uh, certainly, you can get the digital copy on Catalyst store as well, um, the PDF. Uh, but uh, I I am hoping, and I and I would bet that the physical copy will come with like a giant fold out map uh, because oh, I, yeah, love, be cool. I, I love those too. Um, I'm, I'm a fool yeah. for fold out maps. Uh, so <laughs> uh, I got my fingers crossed on that one. But anyway, I, I don't know. I got nothing else to say. Nothing else, but uh, yeah. I think you guys should go buy this. Well, yeah, there's something else that if this does well enough, the way that the Ill Clan Sourcebook has done and Tucky has done, we're going to get more of these. Mm-hmm. So is this the top of the the tip of the glacier. I want the rest of the glacier. Let's go get this and see what else comes out. I love it. I want the glacier. I want the whole glacier. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I want to know what happens obviously in free worlds league space, uh, because that, that's I was about a, to ask you what book you wanted. That's a dumpster fire down there. Uh, who, who's running the show down there? The best is, it, is it Nicole Merrick, right? She's, she's now trying to unite because Jessica died. Right. And then I think her kid Nicole picks up the the torch and is is putting putting everything back together. I think I got the, the names right there. Um, yeah, I think, yeah. I think the careful the, ask my opinion about. Don't you dare the whole like restitching of the uh, Commonwealth, restitching of Merrick's face. We're gonna make we're we're making a comeback. Uh, although it's it's a mess, right? I mean, I think all the you know the. Um, not the ma- magistracy. Who's who's their neighbor to the left? Um, uh, the Tarians? No, that's that's on the right side. The other goofballs. The Oberon the, Confederation. The, the, the Marian hegemony. Uh, oh yeah, the right? space the, Romans. Yeah, the, right. Space Romans. They're like coming in and like invading all sorts of stuff. I don't know. I, I want to know what happens. Somebody write that source book. That's, but it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna be Federated Sons because they're the golden boy, the golden child. Yep. Uh, but yeah. yeah. That gives me more time to, to make up stuff with the Avatar Knights, Matt. That's what I want to do. Bring them over to Tamar Space and we'll go play Mercenary. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Maybe when you come visit, we'll do those battle reports. Oh, very cool. That sounds like uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, all right. Well, guys, I think we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, but we hope you enjoyed this this uh, very special sneak peek. Uh, when I get to the editing bench, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thread in some pictures here to show you guys uh, some of the amazing stuff that is in this, uh, this source book. So, uh, you know, I want to get to work on that, but otherwise, Matt, thanks. Matt, by the way, is, is, uh, on location in, uh, in Houston right now, uh, for work and, and has the commitment and love of, of the <laughs> battle tech community to dial in and help us out. So Matt, thank you very much for, uh, for joining thanks me. Thanks for having me. Yeah. To walk through this, always appreciate your, your insights on this stuff, but guys, that's it. We're done. Uh, don't forget, subscribe give it a like uh come on over to patreon if you want to get more involved there's exciting stuff going on there don't forget to check out aries games and minis Uh, i might have this up for pre-order and if not you can head on over to the catalyst store and get it online there uh but that said i'm all done matt any closing thoughts um i don't know i'm scared for the future it's gonna happen my commonwealth (laughs) God, God I'm a leader Steiner. and I'm a Steiner. It's, it's true. It's true. This is this is the source book you've been waiting for. Uh, all right. Well, guys, thanks so much for watching. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.